Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to give a brief example of Kubernetes load balancing and monitoring using a service mesh called Linkerd. So I'm going to talk in this following order. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about microservices, then what is a service mesh, and then I'll give a very brief introduction to Kubernetes. And these are basically the prerequisites to understand what's coming next. I'm going to demo the application which is deployed in Kubernetes. Then I'll show you how the Linkerd backend is set up in Kubernetes. This is required before you can actually start using Linkerd, which is a service mesh. And then I'm going to show how Linkerd proxy is set up in our application, which is basically a microservices based application. And then I'm going to show you Linkerd dashboard, which is the really cool part. And I'll talk about some other Linkerd features such as load balancing. Okay, so I'm going to talk about microservices through an example for an e-commerce website. So when you use this website, there are several functionalities which is offered by the website such as registration, search, payments or reviews and support. So all these functionalities can be individually served through their own microservices. And the good thing about microservices is that uh, it is easier to maintain, it is easier to for the developers to code, and also if one of the microservices goes down, let's say the search goes down, you can still do registration and probably payments and reviews as well. So this is a very brief introduction about what are microservices. Next, I'm going to talk about service mesh and Linkerd or Istio are examples of a service mesh. So what is a service mesh? Service mesh is basically an infrastructure layer to handle communications between various services. So why is it required? So if we have a lot of microservices, it's a bit easier to know what's happening inside a particular service, but when there is communication happening between several services, we don't know a lot of details about how this communication is going on or if it is going on at a good latency or not or if the throughput is good or not or if some communication is broken. It's easier to just look into one particular service and see if it is running or not. But when it comes to the communication between services, it's not that easy. So if we have a service mesh, which is a layer on top of all these communications happening, then this can help us debug things or check if these communications are going fine and the other usages include load balancing. So let's say if you have you know, thousand users and all of a sudden they reach a million in number and so you have to increase your instances which means you have to increase your uh, servers and these loads have to be balanced between all these servers and these things can be taken care of by a service mesh. Also service mesh improves observability, it can help in authentication, it can do tracing and it can give very nice visualization for communication between the services. Next I'm going to give a very brief introduction about Kubernetes. So I talked about microservices and these microservices are running in containerized platforms. So these containers in which your applications, parts of your applications are running, these need to be managed. It is important to automatically scale up or scale down depending on your requirements or it is important to also easily deploy these applications and also you have to be able to manage these applications and Kubernetes is an open source software which helps us to do this. With regards to this video, you just need to know one particular aspect of Kubernetes which is deployment. So if I have one service, let's say my payment service, I can put it into the Kubernetes cluster in the form of a deployment and then that deployment can ensure that at least two instances of this service are running all the time or at least you know 50 instances of this service are running fine or if any of the instance goes down it will ensure it puts another service back up or 
if you pushed a code and something started to break, you can go back to your original version and many other things which Kubernetes can manage. So now I'm going to show you what application I'm going to cover in this video before I move on to the load balancing aspect of the application. So this is basically a JavaScript game and it just tests your reactions. So the point is you have to click on this as soon as possible. Okay, there are two things happening in the back end. One is to save your best score and the other thing is to decide the sizes of these objects which you are seeing, right? So there is some logic in the back end which decides what size to show. It depends on your performance, but that's not the important bit. So yeah, this is the application. The architecture of the backend looks like this. So this is the front end service which you just saw, which is a JavaScript game. And these two are the backend services. So this is the high score service and this is the game engine service, which basically decides the size of the objects. And this is a service sitting in between these two. And currently these four services are running locally in my Kubernetes cluster. Before we are in a position to use Linkerd as our service mesh, first step you need to do is to set up the backend of Linkerd. And this is called control plane of Linkerd, but I'm not going to go through all the details. I'm just going to go through the steps that are required to set up the backend for Linkerd. So if you go to the website of Linkerd, so this is the link, I'll put this on the description. It's actually very straightforward to initially do all the setting up. So the so first step is to ensure you have Kubernetes installed and kubectl installed. If you are absolute beginner to Kubernetes, I will put a link in the description for a free Kubernetes course, after which you will be able to understand um, basic stuff of Kubernetes. So, okay, so first step is to have a Kubernetes cluster. Then you have to install the CLI for Linkerd. I've already done it, so I'm not demoing it. I did it using brew install Linkerd. You can do it by this command as well. And then you need to export the path. Next step is to validate your Kubernetes cluster. So before the backend side of the Linkerd is actually installed in the cluster, you need to be able to see if you have the permission to do it or not, or if your cluster is running fine or not, if your cluster is healthy or not. So all these checks can be done by running this command linkerd check pre. I will show you how this looks. So if you do linkerd check, it normally looks like this. So it is checking Kubernetes API, Kubernetes version, linkerd config and many other things. And it shows this green check mark. And if everything is fine, then only you'll be in a position to actually install Linkerd in your cluster. So once it is done, then you can install Linkerd simply by using this command, okay? And then you can see the dashboard for Linkerd, but I'll come back to that later. So this procedure ensures that you have put the Linkerd backend into your Kubernetes cluster, then you need to put the Linkerd proxies into your applications. What I mean by that is that our application, which initially looked like this, so you know our services directly contact each other, it will eventually look something like this, where our applications contact each other through the Linkerd proxies. So proxies are just small containers sitting right next to your application containers and they manage all the communication between your applications. And they also talk to the Linkerd backend, but that's, you don't need to understand right now. I'm just going to show how to get this up and running. So after you have installed the Linkerd backend in your cluster, to put these proxies into your applications, there is just one simple step. So I talked about deployments in Kubernetes. If you already have a basic idea about Kubernetes, you probably are familiar with what I'm talking about right now in terms of deployment. So you add deployments using deployment.yaml files normally, and all you have to do is add this extra annotation. Okay, so this couple of lines, linkerd.io slash inject is enabled. If you add this and then do 
kubectl apply this deployment yaml then what happens is this proxy is installed in your kubernetes pod and i have already done the same for all the four services so once this is done then starts the fun part next step i'm going to show you the linkerd dashboard so you can see the dashboard by the simple command linkerd dashboard okay if you execute the command you'll be able to open the dashboard which looks like this so here in the dashboard you can see information about deployments pods namespaces the tcp connections and many other things so let me play the game a bit more so that this dashboard updates in real time okay so now you see it has already picked up the connections here so this is my bff microservice this is the high score and this is the game engine microservice it is not showing the connection from the front end to bff maybe because i'm using an nginx reverse proxy that's why it is skipping that but at least you're having a visual representation of what's going on in your services with regards to its connections and you are seeing these success rate and rps which stands for requests per second and the latencies as well for all your deployments okay so what i can do now is open one of these dashboards here so each of these deployments have dashboards so let's say if i open the dashboard for bff here you can see the requests so far the latencies for each of these requests and the outbound traffic as well same thing you can see for any other deployments so for let's say game engine if i play the game a bit more see same thing for the game engine microservice as well so you see the success rate which is 100 percent so far you see the request rate and you see latencies which are really important so what happens in real life is if users are using your service and you know one of your services goes down or if one of your services is becoming very slow then you will see these latencies going very high up in number the success rate will be you know no longer 100% it will be like 50% or less so all these things you can see easily in this dashboard so linkerd provides this service mesh functionality through which you can easily monitor your cluster okay and now i'm going to show you how it does the load balancing so i have deliberately added two pods for the game engine microservice just to demonstrate load balancing which means if i use this service a lot of times so if i if i'm playing the game which means the game engine microservice is going to get called a lot of times then if we immediately go here we can see both of these pods are participating in these requests so i can individually open both the pods and see it got some requests you know some time ago and uh, with its latencies and for the next pod as well i'm seeing some latencies and some requests as well so the great thing about linkerd here is that it just works out of the box right i didn't have to do anything complicated here it just works so to summarize there were just two overall steps to have your linkerd service mesh up and running so first is to just install the backend of linkerd following these steps and next is to add it as a proxy just by using this annotation in your deployment file okay so it was so simple to do and the value you get from it is really good you get live monitoring of your systems and you see immediately if any of your service is down and you can look the graph on our dashboard of individual pods to see if things are going fine or not.
there are many other things that Linkerd is capable of doing. This is just a small demonstration of uh, how to set it up and what all things you can expect. Okay, I hope you found this uh, useful and let me know if you have any other questions or if anything wasn't clear. Thank you.